Cardi B. Hey, babe. <gasps> Culture, is that Culture sleeping? Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing fine. I'm just here to ask you some of your three questions. Oh, yeah? Let's do it. Let's get started. Let's get started. All right. Come on in. Welcome to the hood. <laughs> Thank you. And here we are in your grandmother's home, right? Mm-hmm. Wow. That's so cool. What's your favorite thing about this home? That it's always packed with family. Yeah? Yeah, so it's always distracting me from the chaos of the world and work. Right. And um, this place makes you feel nostalgic. Yes. Does it? Mm-hmm. Now, you were raised in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. What makes the Bronx so special to you? That if you could survive in the Bronx, you could survive anywhere. Right. <laughs> and um, I got to say, I'm really happy that Culture's making a cameo in this video. Oh, yeah? I'm so bad she's sleeping. <laughs> what's, the new, what's the newest word that uh, she's learned recently? Open, 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 open. She wants me to open everything. Open. <laughs> what, uh, what's the biggest lesson you've learned from Culture? The biggest lesson is that you're never ready on time. Mm. <laughs> mm. Things don't go as you plan, never. And what's the biggest lesson you want to teach her? That um, the worry about people say, yeah. and to dream big and follow it. Uh, what do you wish for her? I wish for her to be a successful businesswoman, independent woman, mm. confident woman. Mm -hmm. What is the most underrated part of motherhood? The most underrated part of motherhood is that it's, it's hard. Right. You know what I'm saying? People think that it's easy, but right. it's hard. We deserve more Mother's Day. <laughs> What's the most challenging part of being a mother? The most challenging part of being a mother, like I said, you're never on time. Right. You're never on time. And you once apologized for wanting to be pregnant again. Why? Oh, uh, you know, my fans, you know, they want their tour. I feel like there's so many things in the work that they want and it will not be able to be done if I'm pregnant. As a new mother, do you feel the way you've been positioned in the press? Has it changed? Uh, no, it still has been the same. People still talk about me like if I don't have a kid, but I know I'm a different person now, so whatever. All right, now some questions about fashion. Oh yeah, let's, let's do go. It. Let's do it. Who's your fashion icon? Uh, to me, Lady Gaga, Missy Elliott, mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer Lopez, uh, Rihanna. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, what's the most extravagant thing in your wardrobe? This Hermes bag that my husband got me for my birthday. It's extravagant. What's your go-to nail design? Long. Always long. I can tell. Look at that. <laughs> um, what's your favorite part of the design process? Uh, seeing the outcome. You know what I'm saying? The sketches always look good, but a good outcome is the greatest because sometimes it can, could be terrible. Yeah. And who's your favorite designer? I love them all. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty diplomatic answer. Yeah. Well, there's a lot to choose from, I guess. Oh, uh, you want some coffee? Yeah, I'd love some. Thank okay, I'm going to put my baby down. Um, I, <laughs> she's really out. Um, so what question do you wish people would stop asking you? I hate when people ask me questions about my butt. People are so obsessed with knowing about the enhanced butt process that it's like, Lord. Right, right, right. More. <laughs> oh. Oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> and what's a question you wish you'd be asked more? <laughs> oh, uh, Look at that. Popular trendy topics. I love when people ask me trendy topics and I love to debate about them. So that's what I want people to ask me more. What's the funniest thing you've ever read in the press about yourself? The funniest thing that I read about myself? Oh, I don't even know what to tell you. There's always something funny every goddamn week. When you feel like cooking, what is your favorite thing to cook? My favorite thing to cook is peanut butter and jelly because it's fast to make. <laughs> What's your favorite place to eat in New York City? Philippe Chow. Uh, what, what should I order when I'm there? Um, chicken saute. How about Atlanta? What, what should I get in Atlanta? Soul food is the best everywhere. Wings, they have the best wings everywhere. Which of your songs is your favorite? They are my babies. I cannot choose between my kids. Okay, all right. Where were you when you first heard yourself on the radio? I was here in New York in the car. Like, <gasps> <laughs> That's too funny. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh -huh. Now, Cardi, when you were growing up here in New York, who were you listening to in hip hop? Um, Missy Elliott. I grew up listening to 50 Cent, mm -hmm. um, the whole Ja Rule, the Murder Inc. stuff. That's what I grew up listening to. And you performed Bad Romance while you were still in high school at a talent show. Yes. Did you ever think Lady Gaga was going to see that? No. I cannot even believe it, but hey. It's crazy. We love you in the hood, Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> what celebrity has made you most nervous? Uh, Beyonce, Lady Gaga, Rihanna. They, every single time I meet them, I'll be like, I'd be like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Who's another icon that you're dying to meet? I feel like I met them all. Mm -hmm. I met them all. 
And what's your dream collab? My dream collab? I don't know. I don't know yet. Okay. So. It's happening. You gonna tell me anything about this new album? I mean, come on. Tell me something. Uh, it's spicy. That's Con it? Yeah, controversial. All right, fine. Now, you've received a lot of labels in the press. A hero of female empowerment, a disruptor, no oh. filter. How do you feel about these labels? I feel good. I feel like that's what I am. Mm -hmm. And who is the real Cardi B outside of the spotlight? I feel like I'm, 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 I have a really chill side. I'm very balanced. I could be a little crazy. But if I don't know you, I'm going to study you. I'm a big Libra, so... And I, I'm always to myself. I don't really hang out too much. I just be home all day. I'm boring. I'm kind of boring. Well, what's the hardest aspect of fame that you've had to adapt to? Uh, the hardest, I, I, people criticizing you, people making stories about you. It's like you're never in peace, even when you're not even doing anything. Is there anything that you wish you could redo in your life? I wish I didn't give energy to certain people. Mm -hmm. But like if I didn't give them that energy, I wouldn't make them who they are today, so. When you hear about beef in the music industry, how does that make you feel? I feel like it's just tiring. People just keep making it, especially when it comes to girls and hip hop industry. And what is something this industry needs more of right now? Realness. Mm. That people ain't real. They ain't living their truth. They ain't telling their story. They ain't telling their life. They ain't living it. Right. And you said you're a Libra. Yeah. What's the most accurate trait of you as a Libra? Like the most accurate? Um, we're very ambitious. We love working. We love making new money. Um, also, uh, it's really hard for us to make choices. Yeah. Now, in a hundred years from now, how would you like to be remembered? I would like to be remembered as the, as the girl next door that made it. Yes, you did. And what advice would Cardi B give to a 16-year-old Cardi B? What advice do I give my 16-year-old self is uh, whatever dilemma that you have, it is not going to matter as soon as high school finished. After you're 18, <laughs> whatever problems I had, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so many people respect you for your determination to stop at nothing to get what you want. Yeah. What kept you going all this time? What kept me going is the fact that I know I always wanted children. So in order for me to have children, I know I have to be stable. I know that I want to spoil my child for the rest of my life. And in order for me to spoil my child for the rest of my life, I have to have money and make money for the rest of my life. So. And when do you feel most vulnerable? When I feel most vulnerable is when people say so many mean things about me. But you know what? I heard Beyonce only allows herself to feel bad for, her one, for one day. So I only give one day for me for, to feel bad for myself. Then I'm back to work and not giving a f What do you say to those in the press who say that you don't need to be a real artist these days, that it's all about the followers, that you just have to be popular? Tell them why they don't try to be it. <laughs> Cardi, can you rank your top five Migos songs? The top five Migos songs, it's a lot. Hannah Montana, Versace, Bad and Bougie. Mm -hmm. Um, hmm. Super Bowl is such an underrated song. I mean, Super Bowl. I love that song. And Mama told me not to <laughs> tell her. <laughs> now you realize what I have to do right now. What is it? I have to ask you to call Offset. Oh, call my man right now? Let's do it. Oh, sure. Where, Where is he? Where is he? He's in LA. He's working so hard out there. What's, um, what's your favorite quality about him? Everything. I love that man. I want to lick him up and down all day. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I feel secure with him. Yeah. Um, protected and financially, always. He takes care of home. He takes care of me. All right. Let's see if he's there. Let's see. Hmm. Hi, honey bunny. Hey. Hey. We got people here. What's up, Offset? What up? Hey. What up? Offset, I gotta ask you a question. What up? What's the best and worst habit that Cardi has? Uh, worst habit she got is being in her phone for 35,000 hours every single day, every day, every single day, just being on her phone, looking at the phone, comments, looking at it. Okay, what's my best habit? Uh, her best habit is raising, raising coaching, and she did, she did mom, and she go crazy, and she, she's sick, doing a great job, and like, a habit with that habit is, um, she like to dress culture and do her hair every day. <laughs> her outfit, take pictures with her and do her hair. I love it. It's and Offset, can you ask can you ask Cardi a question? How much you love me, girl? 
I love you. I love you bigger than my ass. And my ass is big. What do you got to say about that offset? <laughs> that ass is big. <laughs> I love it. Okay. All right, thanks, offset. Love you. I love you too. That is so cool that we got. It's very, very romantic. Mm-hmm. What would you say is Offset's best asset or, or best habit? His best habit is, is everything. Oh, my God, so much trouble. Happy. And then the worst habit is that when I be in the bathroom, he just be trying to buzz in because I think he's trying to catch me talking to myself. Oh, man. All right, so what relationship advice can you share? Um, what relationship advice can I share is that if you love somebody, no matter what, try to work it out. Hmm. What lesson has he taught you? He has taught me, you know, I, I always thought I was this strong woman. Hmm. Well, I am a strong woman, but I, I always feel like I know everything. Matter of fact, that's what it is. I always hmm. feel like I know everything, and he taught me that I, I don't. Uh, what has marriage taught you about yourself? Marriage taught me about myself is that it's, it's a unity. You mm. know, it's, it's not just you, it's, it's both right. together. Is there a double standard in the way that male and female rappers are questioned by the press? Yes, totally. I feel like every single time that a female artist is getting questioned, they always want to mention another artist. They always instigate to talk about them. It's just, ugh. All right, we're going to shift gears here. What's your guilty pleasure? My gu- is smelling my f- <laughs> oh, God. And what's your least favorite movie? My least favorite movie? I don't know. I-, I-, I barely watch movies, so if I'm watching one, it has to be good and it'd be good. All right, and then this is a little bit of a curveball. Who is your least favorite president of the United States of America? <laughs> the one that's going to get impeached. Oh. The third one that's going to Making get Making predictions. <laughs> All right, now if President Trump invited you to the White House and you showed up, what would be your first question to him? My question to me is, if you don't love every American citizen, mm. why become president? That's good. Now, I've read that you love reading up about the political system and former U.S. presidents. Mm-hmm. What's something you recently learned about the system that really struck you? That the system was never made for us. If you had the power to create a law with like a magic wand, what law would it be and why? Um, that you, there's, there's this law, I think, in South Africa that if you say anything racial, you will go to jail. You, you will go to jail or get fined. That would be my law. Say anything racial to somebody else you would get fined, or you might go to jail. Was there a specific event or incident that made you want to use your platform and your audience to speak out? Um, just, just living in my neighborhood made me always want to speak up, always seeing the injustice, seeing how kids my age, my color, darker, were getting treated in my neighborhood. That always made me want to like be involved, even when I was a teenager. So. And you are feeling the burn right now. Oh, feeling burn, the burn. Bernie oh. Sanders, you are feeling that burn. <laughs> what about him excites you the most? Uh, what I like about Bernie Sanders is that he's been doing this for a long time. He's a natural humanitarian. You know that there's people that just care for the world. They just want to take care of people. Mm. That, 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 that's their passion. They don't do it for money. They do it because that's their passion. Yeah. And he's been doing this for a long time, not just to become a president and get good votes. That's just how he naturally is. What does feminism mean to you? Feminism means equal to me. Right. And what message would you like to send to your young female fans right now? Um, To my young ones Mm -hmm. is that whatever is happening right now to you is not going to matter in a couple of years, especially if you're in high school with people bullying you, picking on you. Those people are not going to matter in two years or right after you got out of high school. If you have a boy, he don't like you, he's going to be ugly to you (laughs) in a couple of years. Trust me. Do you think the way that the industry views women is changing? Of course, we're taking over. Taking over pop, hip hop, mm. everything. We're at the top right now. All right, final questions. This is gonna be the most important questions here, maybe. Have you ever thought about what your Cardi language, the rhyming, the taglines that you have, mm. what is that language called? What, give it a name if it doesn't have one. What do you think? Bardiology? <laughs> Bardiology. <laughs> Cardiology, yeah. All right, hopefully that's going to stick, right? Okay, last question. What do you think of when you hear people impersonate your singing and your noises? I, I don't sound like that. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Like that. 
That does that did not sound like. Give me some tips. Uh, you have to have sass. Like, okrr. <laughs> okrr. Mm-hmm. All right, and that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, uh, bye, culture. Ah. All right, sweet dreams. Cardi, thanks so much. <laughs>